Hey y'all, Scott here, and pfft. 0.57 square feet was so 1985. Make way for the future, old man. Zero square feet is here, except at your local Best Buy due to discontinuation. The NES Classic is a real neat little device. The emulation on this sucker is really nice, and it's just overall a charmnado to put it lightly. However, ever since this thing was announced, people started talking about the possibility of more Nintendo mini consoles, specifically the SNES. So today, I put together a list of 30 games for the SNES, N64, GameCube, and Wii that I would love to see appear on those consoles classic editions. Now before we get started, a prologue if I may. I do not fully believe we will be getting Wii and GameCube classic editions, maybe in the distant future, but not anytime soon. The SNES has the best shot and the N64 is still doable in my opinion, but this is just for fun. Also, I did set some rules as to what games I would include on the consoles. No licensed games, as that just overcomplicates things. No compilations, as Nintendo would totally consider something like Mario All-Stars four games instead of the one game we'd consider it. No games not released in North America. I reside in North America, so I'm obviously going to be picking games from my region. I'd love to delve into Japanese or even European exclusives, but the mini consoles are made to appeal to people who remembered playing them back in the day. Oversaturating the game selection with a bunch of Japanese exclusives isn't appealing to them. And no games above a T rating. Simply because Nintendo is going to be selling these consoles, and I don't think they'd want to sell a product that includes a Mario, Kirby, and Animal Crossing game, while also including Resident Evil 4. There are so many amazing M-rated games that I will be giving honorable mentions to here and there, but I think Nintendo will be sticking to the more family-friendly games from these consoles. For the SNES Classic, I picked Act Razor, Chrono Trigger, Contra 3, Donkey Kong Country, Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest, Earthbound, F-Zero, Final Fantasy 3, Final Fight, Harvest Moon, Kirby Superstar, The Legend of Mystical Ninja, Mega Man X, Pilot Wings, Puzzle League, Secret of Mana, SimCity, Star Fox, Street Fighter 2, Super Bomberman 2, Super Castlevania 4, Super Mario Kart, Super Mario RPG, Super Mario World, Super Metroid, Super Punch-Out, UN Squadron, Yoshi's Island, The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, and Zombies Ate My Neighbors. RPGs definitely reign supreme on this classic edition, as the SNES was full of them. Thankfully, Square was the main supplier of them, so that makes it a bit easier for Nintendo to scoop all of them up. SimCity may be questionable due to EA owning the name, but I decided to include it because Nintendo has re-released it on the Virtual Console before, so I think it's doable. Plus, it's a version of SimCity many adore. I love Tetris Attack, and I think many will agree, but the fact of the matter is, it was literally just called that originally for marketing purposes. Nowadays, the series is called Puzzle League, and I think just calling it that and editing the ROM to remove all mentions of the Tetris brand would go a long way and also ensure Nintendo can sell this game in the future. Star Fox and Yoshi's Island have famously not been re-released in their original form because of the Super FX chip and Super FX2 chip found inside them. That makes emulating them perfectly a bit tricky, however, don't tell me it's not possible. It totally is. These games are just different from the rest and deserve to be playable on the SNES Classic. Any of the final fights could have been picked, but I just went classic with this one, the one that most people would remember. Street Fighter 2 is the same situation. There are so many different versions on the SNES, I just decided to go with the one that started it all. The DKC series definitely needed representation, so I chose the first two, as DKC 3, while many still consider it a good game, is still considered the lesser of the trilogy. Coming up is the N64 Classic Edition. I picked out 1080 Snowboarding, Bomberman 64, Bust a Move 99, Castlevania, Donkey Kong 64, Dr. Mario 64, Excite Bike 64, F Zero X, Kirby 64, Mario Golf, Mario Kart 64, Mario Party 2, Mario Tennis, Mega Man 64, Mischief Makers, Ogre Battle 64, Paper Mario, Pilot Wing 64, Pokemon Puzzle League, Pokemon Snap, Pokemon Stadium, Rayman 2, Snowboard Kids, Star Fox 64, Super Mario 64, Super Smash Brothers, Wave Race 64, Yoshi's Story, Zelda Majora's Mask, and Zelda Ocarina of Time. Honestly, the N64 Classic Edition was one of the hardest to do. I mean, the system has some great games, but so many are rare games since Microsoft owns them. The only one we can actually have is Donkey Kong 64. Also, the N64 infamously has a very small library, so I had to fundamentally go with almost every first-party Nintendo release. I only did Mario Party 2 because that is always considered the best of the N64, if not all the Mario Parties, and no Pokemon Stadium 2 because I think one Pokemon Stadium is enough. 
Castlevania and Mega Man 64 aren't the most beloved entries in their respective franchises, but they do have their fans. Rayman 2 is often considered a supreme 3D platformer from the era, and Ogre Battle is one of the very, very few RPGs on the console. Next up on the GameCube Classic Edition, I have 1080 Avalanche, Animal Crossing, Battalion Wars, Chibi Robo, F Zero GX, Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, Ikaruga, Kirby Air Ride, Luigi's Mansion, Mario Kart Double Dash, Mario Party 6, Mario Superstar Baseball, Metroid Prime, Metroid Prime 2, Pikmin, Pikmin 2, Pokemon XD, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, Soul Calibur 2, Star Fox Assault, Super Mario Strikers, Super Mario Sunshine, Super Monkey Ball 2, Super Smash Bros. Melee, Tales of Symphonia, Beautiful Joe, WarioWare Mega Party Games, Wave Race Blue Storm, Zelda Twilight Princess, and Zelda Wind Waker. Alright, first up, for some reason, I forgot Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door existed for some reason, I forgot to include it, I know, I hate Nintendo. Of course, the GameCube had a ton of great M-rated games. The Resident Evil franchise, Eternal Darkness, Geist, Killer7, definitely all honorable mentions. I included Twilight Princess in addition to Wind Waker because Twilight Princess was meant to be played on the GameCube. I'd rather include the Zelda game on the Wii that was made just for it. I consider Beyond Good and Evil, Skies of Arcadia, and Gacha Force, but you gotta understand, the first party lineup on the GameCube made it so I could barely fit any third party games here at all, so I had to choose wisely. I popped Ikaruga on there mainly for variety, it's an excellent shoot 'em up and of course that leads to this classic edition having a good amount of different games. Also, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, because so many people have memories of that game. I'm not a Sonic Adventure guy at all, but I know people love it, so I included the better of the two adventure games. Finally, we have the Wii Classic Edition. I picked Animal Crossing City Folk, Boom Blocks, The Conduit, Donkey Kong Country Returns, Endless Ocean, Excite Bots, Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn, Kirby's Epic Yarn, Klonoa, Mario Kart Wii, Metroid Prime 3, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, Okami, Pokemon Battle Revolution, Punch-Out, Red Steel 2, Rhythm Heaven Fever, Sin and Punishment, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Sonic Colors, Super Mario Galaxy, Super Mario Galaxy 2, Wario Land, Shake It, WarioWare Smooth Moves, Wii Party, Wii Sports, Wii Sports Resort, Xenoblade Chronicles, Zack and Wiki, and The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. I would have loved to include Mad World, House of the Dead Overkill, Resident Evil 4, again, Dead Space Extraction, but I'm a pussy who won't include M-rated games. And GoldenEye 007 would have been a must, but that license, man. In its place, I put The Conduit, which was a pretty big Wii game at the time. Now it's nothing special at all, but it's one of the most well-known, non-licensed, T-rated shooters on the system, which let me tell you, a ton of games were fine for that title. I included Kirby's Epic Yarn over Return to Dreamland, as while Return to Dreamland is a much truer Kirby game, come on, Epic Yarn is way more unique, and I think it's still a very good game. Okami is one of the most well-received Wii games of all time, and Red Steel 2 made up for Red Steel 1 with incredibly well-implemented Wii Motion Plus support. Klonoa is really rad, and Boom Blocks is a must, and I went with Excite Bots over Excite Truck as it's just so much more unique and weird. Now, this is where I should have ended it. Alas, I thought this was the only time I could talk about this. Let's take the concept of 30 great Nintendo games on one product and make it about the entirety of Nintendo's history. A best of Nintendo compilation for the Switch. 30 of Nintendo's most iconic games in one place. This one, I'm going all out. The Switch has the capabilities to run all of these games no matter what weird controller setup they require. It would take a lot of work and I have no doubt Nintendo would just sell all these games separately, but again, this is for funsies, not realsies. Also, to get to 30 games, I basically limited myself to 3 games per major Nintendo console, and because of that, I had to ditch the Game Boy Color and Virtual Boy as I had no room for them. Believe me, I always thought of the Game Boy Color as its own unique console, and even though the Virtual Boy is a hilarious joke, I would have wanted to include it as it's still a piece of Nintendo history, but I wanted to top it off at 30. Also, I'm not picking the be-all, end-all, best Nintendo games per console. If I did that, then the 30 games would be nothing more than Mario's and Zelda's. I'm mainly going for an assortment of amazing games that help say what that era of Nintendo was like. I also tried to give most Nintendo franchises and genres representation, so while I could have included Mario Sunshine, for example, 
I would have already included Mario 64, and there were other franchises that needed love, so I went with other picks. For the NES, I have Super Mario Bros., The Legend of Zelda, and Donkey Kong. Yeah, there may be better NES games out there, but these were the games that started it all and are some of the most iconic games in history. For the SNES, I picked Super Metroid, Kirby Superstar, and Earthbound. Super Metroid is widely considered not only the best SNES game, but one of the best games out there. Kirby Superstar is also considered to be the best Kirby game, and there's probably not going to be a system where Earthbound will get the spotlight, so it has to be included here. On the Game Boy, I have Pokemon Red, Blue, or Yellow, doesn't matter which one, Dr. Mario, and Game & Watch Gallery. Out of all the Pokemon games to include, I think the first one has to be here. And I'm also not a Pokemon guy, so it can be red, blue, or yellow, it doesn't matter to me. Tetris isn't a Nintendo IP, so let's go with Dr. Mario, and Game & Watch Gallery as it's where Nintendo's handheld business started. For the N64, I went with Super Mario 64, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and Star Fox 64. This one was pretty simple. Obviously, we double dip with the Mario and Zelda series, as their 3D debuts are so iconic, they had to be included. And the Star Fox franchise, to many, peaked at the N64, so let's include Star Fox 64. On the GameCube, I have Pikmin, Metroid Prime, and F-Zero GX. The GameCube brought us Pikmin, and I feel like we have to include the one that started it all. Metroid Prime was a breakthrough game and a great comeback story for the franchise. Finally, F-Zero GX is the best F-Zero, so we have to include it. With the Game Boy Advance, I have WarioWare Twisted, Advance Wars, and Golden Sun. WarioWare Twisted is one of the coolest entries in the franchise and started the series tradition of experimenting with bizarre and interesting controller setups. Advance Wars was introduced to North America via the GBA and was a critical success, and we have the cult favorite RPG Golden Sun, which also got its start on the GBA. On the Wii, I picked Wii Sports, Donkey Kong Country Returns, and Punch-Out. Obviously, Wii Sports has to be included as it was a worldwide phenomenon. Donkey Kong Country Returns is a great combination of everything people loved about DKC in the past and new stuff as well, and it also shows off the return of 2D platformers in this era. And we haven't seen Punch-Out yet and the Wii one was excellent, so I picked that one. For the Nintendo DS, I have Rhythm Heaven, Picross 3D, and Elite Beat Agents. All these games make great use of the DS's features and Picross is neat. For the Wii U, I have Splatoon, Mario Kart 8, and Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. The big three Wii U games. I know Mario Kart 8 is on the Switch, but it was the Wii U's best-selling game, plus we don't have a Mario Kart yet. In my opinion, Mario Kart 8 and Smash Bros. for Wii U are some of, if not the best entries in their franchises, and Splatoon symbolizes the Nintendo taking a risk that paid off like crazy with a big new IP. And for the 3DS, I have Kid Icarus Uprising, Animal Crossing New Leaf, and Fire Emblem Awakening. Kid Icarus Uprising is a cult classic that was returned for the Kid Icarus franchise. Animal Crossing New Leaf is one of the best in the series, and Fire Emblem Awakening single-handedly saved the Fire Emblem franchise from being cancelled, and it's now one of Nintendo's biggest franchises. Well, I hope you enjoyed that fun and incredibly time-consuming look at what I like to see in future potential Nintendo Mini consoles. And you know for sure, if any of these consoles are ever announced, I'll be there day and date for their midnight launches, just as I did with the Nintendo Switch, even though I wasn't there intentionally and I thought it was a Black Lives Matter rally. What did I do last night?